Hello friends, it is Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. Wanted to say hello to everybody that's joining the live today. Please let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if I'm coming in loud and crystal clear. Uh, please let me know how the audio level is. I'm never quite sure. I, uh, I don't have the ability to monitor back my audio. So please let me know how it's sounding coming through the internet to you. I'll wait for the chat to pile in. Please tell me, guys, if you can hear me. Tell me how I'm sounding. Tell me if I need more volume or less volume. Looks like we should be live right now. Audio is good. Charlie says audio is good. Super Dave says good to go. King Gamer says sounding good. What's up, King Gamer? Happy to see you in the chat. Thank you, Real Cruise. Audio is great. All right, so we're getting started. Uh, I, just, I was just reading through the chat. I see that Diana uh, has fallen ill and she's going to the ER. So we all uh, are thinking about Diana tonight and hope she makes a speedy recovery. And going along with that, I just wanted to thank all the newest channel members. Uh, Diana just recently joined as a channel member, so her support is greatly appreciated. Um, additionally, Charlie, Charlie Pepin. Uh, hey, Charlie, how you doing tonight, buddy? Uh, he has also joined as a channel member, so I appreciate you guys and uh, appreciate your support and helping me uh, support uh, grow the channel and doing van life stuff. And uh, I'm just back today from Mexico, went down across the border and uh, got a little haircut. You know, I was looking pretty, pretty homeless <laughs> for a while. I usually, you know, I'm just on the, the van life budget trying to keep costs down. And so typically I get a haircut like once every month and a half. I have it cut short and then I let it grow out to where it just gets so bushy it looks ridiculous. And so that's where I was last week when you guys saw me. My hair was looking ridiculous. But I went to, to Mexico, got a great haircut, only cost me $6 uh, from this wonderful barber or hair stylist, hairdresser. What's a female barber? I don't know. Barberette. <laughs> anyway, a wonderful lady that gave me a haircut, only cost me $6. And I uh, tipped her four, so uh, it was a great deal for both of us. She made a little money. I saved a little money, and it was awesome. So I'll be releasing the video on Sunday that covers my trip, but I went and actually parked my van in the parking lot right at the Algodones, Mexico border crossing. So I was able to park um, in U.S. On, in Arizona and then just walk across the border into Mexico and hang out and actually I went the night before and you can stay overnight at that border parking lot so I actually camped out last night on the border did a little walking around took a look at the huge border wall that they have down there so it was a good time and it was a fun video so you guys can check that out on Sunday I see Nikki boy is here from Bangkok Thailand hello Nikki boy happy to have you Chilling, D chilling in D.C., uh, Algodones, Mexico, brother. That's where I went. Super Dave, live from my box truck. I walked across outdoors, Dreadhead. Good to see you, Dreadhead. Happy to have you here. I appreciate all you regulars. Dreadhead, you're in here a lot. Super Dave is always in here supporting. Super Dave is a channel member. I appreciate you, Super Dave. And I hope you are getting your electrical system dialed in and getting all the pieces ordered. I know it's not cheap. Uh, chilling in DC. Welcome to the live, my friend. I see you all the time uh, in the YouTube comments. You're always commenting and supporting the videos. I appreciate it. And uh, I liked your comment on my kind of my van tour video. I got roasted for saying I only shower once a week. And so I'm actually talking about that in Sunday's video. We're talking a little bit about van life hygiene. And I stand firm in my belief that ain't nobody supposed to be showering every day. So uh, you guys can watch the Sunday video to check that out. So just a little bit of uh, channel news. The channel is growing, my friends. Uh, channel is growing very well. The last three videos I put out have done over 20,000 views. 
uh, and all the, the last three videos are only three weeks old or newer. So it feels like we're finally going places. Um, as far as the algorithm is concerned, I feel like YouTube is serving the channel up to new people. And so I'm excited for growth and uh, a little more financial compensation, which just means I can travel more and go to cooler places and uh, bring you guys better quality videos. So it's all about just making better content. So I'm looking forward to be able to do that. Um, my video, Living in My Work Van, that has over 100,000 views now, which is very exciting uh, for a two week old video. So we're on our way to the top, we're excited. And I uh, just, again, I want to thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate your support. And I promise when I get big, when I get to the top, I'm not going to be one of those uh, stuck up influencers that just forget about their audience. I'm going to remember you guys, all you guys that were in the trenches with me from day one, just grinding it out on all of my thousand view videos. And uh, I just appreciate you guys sticking around. So we'll have a Hall of Fame for all the OG supporters, and I really appreciate you guys being here for the ride. Outdoor Sky in the chat says, Sup, any plans on going south this year? Not this year, my friend. I'm thinking next year. This year has been just kind of, I mean, I just finished. I basically just completed this box truck build this winter down in Arizona at my dad's. This winter I did... Um, I added like upper cabinets and redid my electrical. So really only now is my van complete where it's like, okay, now I can get out of build mode and start really thinking about traveling and, you know, doing some of the more exciting van life stuff. So this year, uh, as we head into uh, spring and summer, my plans are basically uh, currently I'm in Arizona. My plans are to leave Arizona in a couple weeks, head over to California. And so will be able to um, do a little bit of San Diego work. And one other thing too is since the channel's been blowing up, I've been getting more people reaching out for solar work. So I have some kind of exciting potential opportunities that may come up. Uh, I might be able to do some solar on like some off-grid structures. I had one guy reach out to me that has like a shipping container that he wants to do a solar system on. So I think that would be really fun. He's out in the desert in California. So... Might be able to go out there and show you guys what it looks like to install solar on a shipping container. I don't know. It might get crazy. Um, but I'm looking forward to the opportunities. And so that's the plan for this year. California, up the West Coast to Oregon. Spend summer in Oregon. Maybe a little bit of Washington. And then we'll head back south for the winter. And then I'm thinking next year... Um, 2025 will be in a place financially uh, to do a little more traveling and kind of expand a little bit and just have a little more confidence uh, that we're going to have the financial backing to do some fun stuff. And that's all. That's what it's all about, guys, especially with van life. Let me just silence my cell phone here. Um, especially in van life, you want to make sure you're not putting yourself out on a limb financially. Uh, in case something goes sideways, you want to make sure you're prepared for that. So hopefully next year, we will be in a better position. Chillin' in D.C. says, you made my mouth water with that pot roast. Thank you, Chillin' in D.C. I appreciate it. It was delicious. If you see the Instant Pot, where is it? Here it is, the Instant Pot back behind me. I'm actually cooking a roast right now. I love the roasts. I do just about one a week. And so that's what I'm having for dinner after the live stream. Karen R hopped in the chat. She's from Genesco, Illinois. Happy to have you here, Karen. Charles Serratos, another strong contributor. I see Charles in the chats, in the comments. I appreciate you. Uh, Super Dave says, any news on the internet site build? Um, yeah, you know, we're moving along at a snail's pace, Super Dave. I have, uh, there's just a lot going on right now. So it, it will be coming, but I don't have an ETA yet. I'm still in a place where I'm doing all the work myself. Um, and so I'm not hiring people to do the website work. So I, it's just kind of when I, when I can get around to it. So hopefully later this year, I will have a website up. Robert says, hello, Brad. Good to know. Good to see you tonight. Love, light, and blessings from Michigan. Thank you, Robert. Happy to be here. Happy for some love and light. I'll take all the love and light you got, brother. I appreciate it. 
Let me look over the notes I have. I think that's about it. Just wanted to kind of give a channel update. I appreciate everybody for being here. We'll be heading up over to California, then up to Oregon this summer. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, I'm always happy to take your guys' questions. Any questions you have, they don't have to be just about the video topic. It can be any kind of van life related questions. So feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, once I get into it, I might miss them. So I'll also offer an opportunity at the end of the chat to take questions. So if you guys have stuff you really want to ask, uh, we'll do a QA and a at the end and you can ask anything. Anything you want to ask, I'll be here to um, answer that. Living, working outside box is in central Florida. Hello, happy to see you. I'm sure it, sure it is nice and sunny in Florida. It's hot here in Arizona. It was 98 degrees today in Yuma, but inside my box truck with my air conditioner, it was a comfortable 76. It actually got so cold inside the box truck, I had to turn the air conditioning up because I was actually chilly, which is a wonderful problem to have when it's 98 degrees in Arizona and you're getting free energy from the sun. We got no utility bills. We ain't paying for electric. We just run that AC on blast with free energy from the sun, baby. That's how we do it. Charlie Pepin, any news on the plans on the commune land in northern Arizona. Charlie, the land takes money, and so all I'm waiting on is the right financial situation. You know, since I'll ultimately be leading up the project, I have to be financially responsible for it. So, um, you know, when that kicks in, you know, maybe, uh, maybe next year if all goes well. I mean, all we really need is kind of initial money to get the land. And then I'll want to make sure I'm at a point where there's like monthly, you know, solid monthly revenue coming in. And then, you know, once that happens, you know, we can plow forward on the land and uh, you guys will be invited. That's for sure. All right, guys. So I'm going to dive into it. We're going to get right into the topic for tonight. The live stream topic is van life. Is it a lonely life? And I wanted to address this because I see a lot of comments on my videos just here and there. People asking, is it lonely? Um, you know, do you get lonely? It's, you know, and so I wanted to just kind of hit that head on. And the reason I think most people, I think a lot of people associate van life with loneliness because when they watch most van life videos, especially like travel videos, it's basically people out in the forest or out in the desert and they're kind of out in nature and they're all by themselves. And so I think a lot of folks that watch that content assume that that's what your life is going to be like. Like if you're in van life, then you're just out off grid living in the woods all by yourself and that you know could be pretty lonely for a lot of people and so that's what I'm, that's what we're going to talk about so here's the thing we're going to say you know people ask me if van life is lonely and to that i would respond that i feel like american life in general is quite lonely and so for example when i owned a house i was working 40, 50 hours a week as an HVAC technician. And I was pretty lonely, you know, all day at work, I would be by myself doing my technical jobs, driving around in my work van by myself. And by the end of the day, I was tired. You know, I didn't have energy to go out and be social or, you know, want to go do activities. At the end of my day, I was pretty exhausted. And so I would just go home to my house and kind of crash out and watch Netflix. And that was pretty much my life aside from on the weekends. You know, if, if I was available on the weekends and I wasn't doing um, home improvement projects, then I would try to go out, meet up with friends and do activities. But other than that, I was pretty lonely, you know? And so I feel like loneliness um, isn't something that's exclusive to your living situation, right? Like it's not just where you're living, but it's also just kind of what is your lifestyle like? And so I think the, the way to address the question properly, is van life a lonely life, is first we need to define being lonely. Because when you're living in a van, you know, you can still call your parents, you can message a friend on Instagram, 
you can still connect with people on the internet in the same way you would connect with people if you're living in a house. Nothing changes. So in that regard, it's all the same. And then, you know, the other type of loneliness you could look at is if you're single, if you're living alone versus living with a partner. So that's kind of a different type of loneliness. And so, you know, kind of the same thing applies for van life. So I know a lot of van life couples. Uh, I know couples that both travel in a van and live in a van together. That's kind of the traditional of, you know, and when I say van life, I just mean any type of vehicle dwelling. This can be RV life, van life, school bus life, probably not car life. If you're living in a car, you're probably not going to have a partner with you, but I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't judge. But basically, whatever type of vehicle you're traveling in, you know, you can still have the option to have a partner. And then there's another way that you can do, you know, van life and still have a partner, which would be, and for me, I think this is more of the ideal situation, would be if your partner had their own vehicle. So for example, one van lifer that like inspired me to get started six years ago is Brian uh, from Adventure Van Man. And so I followed his channel for like, I don't know, three, four years. And he was single uh, in a van, then a box truck. And he traveled around, but he found a partner, uh, Kelly, who also had her own vehicle. She has a Ford Transit. And so they're in a relationship, but the cool thing is they both have their own vehicles. So, you know, they'll caravan together and go to different points of interest and hang out. But, it di but then additionally, sometimes they'll do their own travel plans. Like sometimes he'll break off and go do something that he really wants to do by himself. And she'll break off and do her own thing. And then in the evening as well, even when they're together, they each have their own separate, basically, bedrooms where they have all their own stuff and their own kitchen. And, you know, for me, I think that's absolutely the ideal relationship. I think it's pretty crazy that, you know, kind of human standards are you meet somebody, you get in a relationship, and then ultimately you sleep together in the same bed until you break up or until you die. Like, how crazy is that? Like, if you're married 40 years, you shared a bed with somebody for 40 years. That's pretty crazy to me. And I don't really think that's the best way to go about it. And I'm someone that's done both. I've lived in my house with a girlfriend for years. I've shared my bed. And then also I've had um, girlfriends when I've been traveling in a van. And I much prefer having my own space and having my own dedicated kind of freedom. And I think that helps actually maintain more healthy boundaries in a relationship where you're not just always in each other's space and you like have some distance, you have some time to be alone and just be weird and like pick your nose and fart and like watch some TV thing that they don't wanna watch. I think it's actually healthy to have like a decent amount of alone time. So like for me moving forward, I would prefer uh, to be with a partner that I'm not living with, you know, in that space. So let's bring this all back to being lonely. So we talked about kind of uh, how you communicate. And then we talked about um, having a relationship. And so basically, now that we've realized, okay, you can have a relationship either way, you can communicate with people digitally, either way, in a van, in a house, you still have a phone, you can text message, you can Instagram. So when people speak about loneliness, I believe they're actually speaking about one on one face to face human interaction. And as humans, we all need that. And I believe that's what people say when they talk about being lonely, is that absence of human interaction. And so that's what we're going to kind of break down and see what van life looks like and, you know, how much of an absence of human interaction do you actually face living in a van. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, there's basically, in my opinion, there's two types of van life. And so this is very important for people to think about. Um, there's two types, not that you have to choose one or the other. You can do both. I do both. But there's basically two ways that you can van life. So the first way we're going to talk about is city van life. Okay. And so this is where you live in your van in a city, in a place that's populated, where there's a lot of people, there's 
all the traditional infrastructure. There's parks and there's restaurants and there's movie theaters and all that type of stuff. So with city van life, and then I guess I'll just say the second part we're going to talk about is kind of like off-grid van life, which is like living out in the forest, living in the desert, looking outside your van and not seeing anybody else. So we'll talk about these two types of van life. And I think it's important for anybody who's considering van life to understand the pros and cons of each of these and understand that they both exist and you can use both of them and kind of find out what balance is best for you. Okay, so we'll look at both of them. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is city van life. And as far on the loneliness scale, I rated city van life as not lonely at all. And this is like what I did in San Diego last month. If you guys were following the channel, city van life, you're in a city. I was in San Diego. I was parking at night on a commercial street in the city and so I had I had a core group of like six to eight van life friends that I knew personally that I would hang out with and so a lot of us would park on the same commercial street or I actually found that city park also in San Diego and so a lot of us would park there at night as well so at nighttime when you're sleeping you're surrounded by friends and so you can you know, go hang out with each other before bed or not, but you have that connection. And then during the day, we were driving, I was driving to the beach. And so when you go to the beach, like there in San Diego, there's van lifers spread out all over the place. There's people chilling on the grass in uh, on blankets. There's people playing in like hacky sack. Uh, I actually went and sat on the beach with a bunch of friends. We played card games and had some snacks. So I was basically surrounded by van lifers 24 seven, which is actually more exposure to the human connection than you would have in sticks and bricks living. Because when you're in sticks and bricks, after you leave your job or you know the gym or whatever social activity you do, then you're kind of going back to your house and you don't really see anybody until you leave the next day to do whatever it is you're doing. But with this city van life, there's constantly people all around you. So you do have that option to go hang out with friends, you know, kind of whenever you feel like it. And the great thing about city van life for folks, if you choose, if you want to end up staying in one city, then you have the same opportunities you have living in a sticks and bricks where you can meet friends. You can have local friends that live in the area that you do stuff with. Um, I mean, you're probably not going to invite them over to your van. I don't know. Maybe you will. But you can go to their house. Uh, you can go out to dinner. You can go for coffee. You can do activities. Uh, when I was in Austin, Texas, I did uh, some activities at a rock climbing gym. And so I made a couple friends at this rock climbing gym. So if you're doing city van life, you can do all the regular van life or all the regular social stuff. And you can have just as much exposure to folks as you would have if you were renting an apartment. So there's really no difference there in how much social interactions you can have. And another example is when I was living back in Oregon, like four years ago when I first started van life, I was in my first van, my blue uh, high top Econo line. And I was super into photography, and I actually joined a Portland, Oregon photography club. Uh, we were called the Photons. We thought we were super cool, but there was like there was a pretty good group of photographers, like maybe twelve of us, and we would meet up all the time downtown Portland. We would do like nighttime uh, uh, night exposure like long exposure photography. We would go to like, uh, one time we rented a hotel room at like this cool, like old school hotel. We did a bunch of photo shoots, all kinds of cool stuff. And these were all regular, uh, you know, regular sticks and bricks people. None of these people had vans. I was the only van lifer. And they all thought it was so cool because when we would go do these events, like we would do a lot of nighttime stuff because a lot of people worked. So we'd go out at like 10 o'clock on a Friday night and do photo shoots. And then people would start peeling off around midnight because they had to drive home. You know, they had to drive home an hour or a lot of people like they couldn't drink because they had to drive. And having a van, you know, my home was right there. So we'd go do these photography things. I would be there all night. I was the last one to leave because all I had to do is walk over to my van and go to bed. So 
I mean, for me, like that was the perfect situation to do van life. And I made a bunch of cool friends through that experience. And none of them, you know, nobody thought I was weird or like shunned me, you know, because I lived in a van. Like they all thought it was super cool and it was a really good time. So that's another example of how, you know, city van life is actually really, really cool. And you actually have more opportunities to be social. And then another thing I wanted to mention is like, if we look at, you know, your average life, and I'm talking about even you guys that are watching today, you know, like how often do you, especially if you're older, because one thing I noticed is as, because I'm like, I'm almost 40. So my twenties are really fresh in my mind. So I can visually see like the progression as you age, how your social circle circle kind of like shrinks away right? Like you're in your twenties, everybody's partying, big parties, everyone's hanging out. You're going to the beach on the weekend. But as you get older, everyone kind of breaks away, does their own thing. Everyone gets like serious jobs, starts families. And ultimately, once you get a job and start a family, you're kind of spend a lot of your time at home. And so I would ask, you know, most of you guys, how often do you actually see friends and family? You know, it's typically on big holidays or birthdays that everybody gets together. And maybe there's some events here and there where you see friends. But for the most part, I would say most people don't actually see friends and family on a regular basis unless they live close to you. And so one thing that's really cool about van life is you can go visit friends and family and you can stay with them for extended periods of time. So like, for example, when I had a regular job, I would go up to my grandma's house. She was like an hour and a half from me. I would go up to her house, hang out for dinner, but then, you know, come eight o'clock, I'd have to go back home, get ready for work the next day. So, you know, you're seeing, I'm seeing my grandma for a couple hours and you guys know how that is. You go to a family function on the weekend, you hang out for a few hours, then everybody goes back and has to do their life because they have to go home. But if, you, if you're in a van life situation, Odds are your income is not tied to having to go to a specific location. And so when you go to visit family, you know, you can park in their driveway for two or three days, park on the street for a couple of days. And so instead of just going to see a family member for a few hours, you can hang out with them over the course of a few days. But then the benefit is you still have your home there. So you're not like in their house 24 hours for three days. You can go hang out for a few hours, go back to your van go drive away, go do something, come back and hang out. So having this like remote house as a, like a home base is really cool because you can actually spend more time visiting friends and family. So my answer is like van life is city van life is there's no way city van life is more lonely than living in an apartment or a house unless you want it to be. And that's okay too. And that kind of rolls into, you know, the next thing we're going to talk about, which is kind of like off grid, um, off grid living out in the forest, living out in the desert. And that's what you'll see a lot of times on like uh, YouTube, other YouTuber channels, especially the big channels where they have a nice uh, safety net of finances and they can afford to just you know, not really need a, a job in the city so they can just go out and be out for weeks at a time. So a lot of those videos, you'll see them by themselves out in the forest doing stuff. And you can definitely do that if you want. That's what I'm calling kind of off-grid van lifing. And that's going to be more lonely because you're not going to be in the city. You're not going to be close to other people, right? So at that point, your only point of connection is going to be heading out uh, to the town or any other van lifers that may kind of roll up and park next to you. I just saw that FNA van life popped up in the chat. I had to pause for a minute. I had to say what's up. FNA van life, I love these guys. I met Frankie and Alex years ago before they got married when they were just a couple of kids with a dream of seeing all 50 states. And uh, I love to see how they progressed and how their YouTube channel has blown up. And uh, Frankie and Alex were a big inspiration for me because I started van life and YouTube before Frankie and Alex, but I wasn't serious about it. Like I would just randomly throw up a video 
and I just didn't take it serious. And then once I met with them, I still didn't take it serious, but I followed their path to success. And once I saw them like, okay, now they're actually making like real money and they're getting actual subscribers and they're doing all this cool stuff. Then I kind of like doubled down and was like, okay, you know, Frankie and Alex can do it. I can do it. And so they kind of inspired me uh, to keep it moving. And so that's what we're doing. So I wanted to say, hey, to Frankie and Alex, I appreciate you guys. And I hope to run into you down the road. Going back to the, ta to the chat, Danny G just rolled up. What's going on, brother? Happy to see you tonight, Danny G. Robert Michael, I'm late. What did I miss? Robert Michael, you're going to have to watch the replay. You missed some hot, hot fire, my friend. We don't have time to rewind. We got to keep going forward. Catch the replay for sure. Um, okay, guys, so traveling in the desert, it's going to be a little more lonely. You're not going to necessarily have a lot of friends around you. But what I will say is I do have a lot of uh, van life friends who travel kind of in groups. They'll do caravans and they will meet up and follow other van lifers. And so if you're someone who really appreciates being around people, then I would definitely encourage you to look for other van lifers that are also doing similar things and roll in with them and just keep connected on Instagram, on Facebook, and then just go where the other van lifers are at. So like, for example, in the desert, in Arizona, in the winter, you cannot throw a rock in the desert without hitting a nomad. They're everywhere. So you can live in the desert off grid, no rent. You're out of the city, but you got a ton of support, all kinds of van life friends, all kinds of events going on. There were so many events this winter. I only went to a few. I went to Schooly Palooza. I went to Van Aid and uh, a couple other smaller meetups and just met a whole bunch of fun people. And another example in the summertime, Oregon is a hot spot for van life, uh, specifically Bend, Oregon. A lot of van life folks go to Bend, Oregon. There's a lot of BLM camping and you can stay only about 15 minutes out of the big city. And then in the big city, they have all the facilities, fresh water, fill, food, all kinds of fun stuff. You can float the river. It's absolutely beautiful. And then in the summer, you have Northwest Nomads and also Descend on Bend. Both those events take place in the summer. I do recommend attending both of those. So those are solutions you can have to not be lonely if you're going to do more of a forest, desert, off-grid type living scenario. And then, you know, something else I want to talk about, and I should, I was going to throw up some pictures here as well, uh, just to show you guys what's up. Let me see what I got here. Okay, cool. So I wanted to just show you guys some photos really quick of what I'm talking about. Uh, let's see this first photo here. This was me on Fiesta Island just a month ago. I was hanging out with like six other nomads. We were on the beach watching the sunset. Uh, the box truck right next to me. This is Aaron um, from Bacon's Rebellion, Aaron Bacon. We made nomad pizza sourdough bread by scratch. She has a, a propane pizza oven. It was a really great time. And here is another day in San Diego. You can see all the van. There was no shortage of community. I literally open my door and go talk to any of these van life friends. And since Frankie and Alex are in the chat, we're going to throw up this old school photo. This was the first and Alex as well as David and Shelby from Aimless Travels. This was July 4th. Oh man, probably 20, 2021 or 2022. It's been a minute, but this is all of us hanging out um, in basically Eugene, Oregon area. We had a last minute camp out and I was hanging out with Isaac Turner. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, Isaac Turner. And Isaac literally knew all these people only through Instagram. So he knew me and his friend Jordan in person, but Frankie and Alex, he knew only through Instagram. And then David and Shelby of Aimless Travels, he knew only through Instagram. And so he just reached out to him and said, hey, we're going to go camping by the river. Do you guys want to come? And everybody came. We all hang out. We were all strangers, except for me and Isaac. But like we had the best time that weekend. Like everybody was just fun and exciting. There was no drama. There were no arguments. I mean, it was a really good time. And so this is a great example of how, you know, you can just have 
all kinds of community wherever you go. And, you know, if you want it, you can find it. So just wanted to show that. Uh, Frankie's hopping off. Good to see you, Frank. Good luck on the video edit. I know you're going to post another banger. Hope to see you soon, buddy. Um, so let's hop back to the notes really quick. Let me see. I see some chat. Let me just check the chat really quick. Make sure I'm not plowing over everything. Uh, Robert Michael, I saw an article featuring you in your van the other day. I think the website was called something like Autovolution. Uh, yeah, it's possible. I don't know of any. I haven't personally contributed to any articles. Um, I don't care if they share my stuff. Like, please go ahead. Uh, share everything. Looks like I might be buffering. That might be my fault. Might be the nomad internet. Buffering bad. Okay, hold on, guys. We will wait and see. All right, my friends, so I'm currently connected to Nomad Internet device. Uh, it's been a good device, but reception here, at, I'm at my dad's again, reception here in Yuma is a little bit spotty. And I do see at the bottom, it looks like I am a little bit buffering. So please let me know. I'm going to take a minute and let the chat catch up. Let me know how it is let me know if it smooths out a little bit um although i don't think there's really anything i can do about it because that's my only internet source so hopefully it, hopefully it clears up you guys let me know how it's how it's doing i'm gonna go back and read the chat messages here robert michael says it came up on my google page that's awesome man i'm happy to hear people are sharing the love um <clears throat> Robert Clymer says, I would prefer to join a nomad group for traveling and camping in the wintertime. Robert, I agree with you. Anyone that's interested in joining a uh, camper group, you can go to Howa's website. That's Bob Wells um, Charity, Homes on Wheels Alliance. They have ca uh, caravan service, excuse me, which is where they put together groups of people that travel around the desert in the winter. So if you want to meet a bunch of people and travel in a in a group, then you should check out Homes on Wheels Alliance, their website, and see what caravan offerings they have. I would definitely recommend that. Uh, Vox hops in the chat and says, I want to say thank you for the helpful videos. I've saved quite a few to help me with my own build. Maybe I'll meet out there somewhere. Absolutely, Vox. I would love to see you out here on the road. RV Davey says, I'm going to Flagstaff. Yes, Flagstaff is a great spot for the summer. I look so long in this, young in this photo. Yeah, I know, right? That's baby nomad Brad. <laughs> that was like, I think 2021 is when that was. So yeah, that was, you know. Once you start aging, it happens quick. Uh, Robert says it's okay. Charlie says it's okay. Robert says it's okay. All right, guys. So we're just going to go ahead and continue. And um, we'll just see what happens. Again, internet right here in Yuma is not the best. But hopefully, you guys can deal with it. Um, so one other thing I wanted to mention with you guys. besides, So we've talked about city van life, right? We also talked about um, off-grid van life you know, living in the forest, in the mountains. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is kind of a hybrid of the two, it's a little bit in between, is that you have the option to relocate. Audio is good, but picture is buffering. Okay, that's fine. As long as the audio is crystal clear, that's fine. I'm going to throw up some slides so you guys can just watch the slides and you can listen along. So something else you guys can do is you can find places that you uh, wanna travel to where there's other groups of like-minded people 
and then you can stay there kind of short or medium term. So for example, I was in Texas for a year and a half while I built out this current box truck that I'm living in. And I had a mutual acquaintance that I had met through the internet, didn't know him personally at all. And he's kind of a freedom oriented guy. And he just mentioned that he was looking for some help with one of his businesses and he had 10 acres in Texas and that, um, you know, he was looking for some help with his business and also some help on his property. And I, this was right when like the pandemic was at its peak and Oregon was shut down. You couldn't even go into a restaurant and he was in Texas, which was open. And so I said, hey, buddy, I'm happy to come out to Texas, stay on your farm and I'll help you out and we'll just figure it all out. Whatever happens, happens. And so I went ahead and went out to his spot and he turned out to be a super awesome person and his family was super nice. And I ended up staying there for a year and a half. And this is a picture of me on his farm helping out. Uh, that's him in the background and his wife. And I was helping out with some gardening projects. So that's something else you guys can do is you can live in your van, but you can bounce, you know, between locations. You can find people that have land that want help. And, uh, and that way it's semi-permanent. And we'll sw sw uh, swip, swap back to this photo. This is a picture of my permanent parking spot there in Texas. So I had this gravel pad right here that I parked my van at. And then right in front of me, there were two other nomads that also, uh, you know, stayed on the same piece of land. So there's community. Everyone's close. We would get together for farm projects and Sunday breakfast on occasion. So, you know, you can also do something like this where it's kind of a mix of both, uh, you know, living off grid, being in the country, being with people. And what else is cool is once I got to Texas and I stayed on his farm. I didn't stay there every night. I went, I spent the night in Austin, in Austin, Texas. I went to Dallas, I explored around, and I ended up meeting with a whole bunch of other van life folks. And so here's a picture of me. This is a different farm in Texas, about an hour away from the farm I was staying at. And everyone in this photo are all nomads. And if you look in the back, you can see there's a Ford Transit, there's a Class A RV, there's a guy with a pickup truck pulling a camper, there's my van, there's another van out of the picture. So this is a bunch of super cool nomads that I didn't know, didn't know them online, met them in person, had a super good time. And I actually ended up dating this girl right here. Her name's Nicole. Uh, I dated her for, I think, about a year, actually. And we traveled a little bit together. We traveled uh, from Texas over to Arkansas. And we did a little bit of van life in the Ozarks. And then she came with me uh, over to Arizona. And we went to San Diego together. So, you know, we ended up doing some traveling together and being in a relationship. And... So that was a super good experience also. And that all just came from traveling and hitting the road and just kind of seeing how things end up. So, you know, and when I was in Texas, I was, I was literally turning away invitations to do stuff. I mean, there were so many activities and options to be social that, you know, me personally, I'm a little more of an introvert. So I didn't even take all the opportunities that were available to be social. And so, you know, another thing I was going to mention along with this is last summer, for those of you that have been with the channel for a while, I traveled with my dad. I went up from, I was in Texas. I went up to New Mexico and for an entire month, the whole month of basically the whole month of July and a little bit of August, I traveled around um, New Mexico with my dad. He was in his RV. I was in my van and also my cousin Lonnie. He was in his box truck. And so here's a photo of me and dad and Lonnie. And this was up at Heron Lake, New Mexico, 7,000 feet elevation. It was nice and cool during the hot summer weather. And so, uh, you know, we just had a really good time hanging out. And, you know, I was having a bit of a conversation with my dad. And I said, you know, how many people your age, you know, my dad's in his 70s. I said, how many of your friends have their children come visit them for, you know, months at a time at their winter home in Arizona? 
And how many of your friends have children that can travel with them for a month? And the answer is zero. My dad has knows zero people his age that have children that visit them as much as I visit him. So in actuality, because I do van life and I have this freedom, I can spend more time with my parents than most people can. They're living a normal life, working a nine to five. So, you know, guys, I feel like I pretty much hammered it pretty hard. Uh, you know, van life, it's, I, in my opinion, it's not lonely unless you want it to be. You know, if you're someone that doesn't really like people and you just want to be by yourself in the forest, that's absolutely an option. You can do that. And a lot of people do do that. There's a lot of folks that just want to be left alone and want, want their peace and quiet. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, the reality is van life is whatever you make it, right? It can be lonely or it can be full of relationships and friendships and opportunity. It's really about what you make it. So at the end of the day, my conclusion after living in a van for six years is 100% van life is not lonely if you don't want it to be. And one other thing I'll just mention, I saw it come up in the chat. You can also get a pet. I traveled with my dog Lucy for uh, five years. She just passed away this last spring. Uh, but up until then, she was my van life dog, and we had a great time, and I really appreciated having a dog. So I'll definitely get one again in the future. Uh, maybe as soon as next year, I'll look into getting another dog, and they're just a great, great companion to have on your van life journey. So I'm going to go back to the chat. Uh, it's 647, so we're getting closer to wrap-up time. If you guys have questions or comments, anything at all, drop it in the chat now. And we're going to go through some Q&A. Uh, John C. says, I'm 54 now. You're right. You can age pretty quickly. It feels like 38 was just a few years ago. Yes, John, I'm 38. I'll be 39 in August, creeping up on 40. And I really, I feel like I just turned 30. So I feel you, brother. I know exactly what you're talking about. Got Reactions says you recently did the all day AC. It stays like 90 plus at night here in Texas. I noticed it was like 60s in your video. Do you think it would still run all night? Yes, Got Reactions. I lived in Texas last summer with this air conditioner. The only reason I installed this air conditioner is because I was living at that farm in Texas and it was too damn hot. So yes, it works all night. Now it does run more because there's humidity in Texas. So your air conditioner will use more energy. But that being said, I was still able to run the air conditioner all night, no problems. However, sometimes on occasion I would wake up in the morning and the battery was pretty low. Uh, never critically low. I never ran out of battery, but sometimes it would be pretty low. So just something to consider. But yes, 100% it will work in Texas. One thing you have to consider <clears throat> is insulation factor is a huge issue with air conditioning. I built this van to have good insulation. So if you're in like an RV, you won't have enough insulation. If you're in a bus or a shuttle bus, something with a lot of windows, it won't have enough insulation. The only reason it worked for me in Texas with this setup is because this van is very well insulated and I only have two windows and they have insulated window coverings on them. So you have to keep that in mind. Your insulation is also very important. Uh, holy cow, I got a super chat. $20. Woo! We're going prime time, Super Dave. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. $20 super chat that fills up the gas tank nicely. Uh, what else do we got? We got something from Wolfman. Wolfman's goodies gave me a $5 chat. Thank you so much, Wolfman. I appreciate you. Guys, I appreciate the financial compensation. It's hard out here being a uh, lowly YouTuber and every dollar helps. I appreciate it. I just try to bring value. I don't want your money if you don't take away anything from these videos. Um, I really want to make sure it's informative and it's good quality. And I hope that by watching these videos, you guys can learn and you can ultimately use the knowledge to save yourself time, save yourself money, save yourself headache. 
And so I hope you find value in these videos. Thank you, Wolfman. Thank you, Super Dave, for the super chat. I appreciate you guys. Um, let's see. Uh, let me go back to the chats. I'm going to see what's going on. Uh, Dread, Outdoors Dreadhead, I found my homestead couple doing the same thing where I live. They're offering a spot to park. Yes, guys, if you're wondering about how to find a spot to park, look for homesteading people. Um, go on. So I went to the Freedom Cell Network, uh, freedomcells.org. I know it sounds a little weird, Freedom Cells, but all it is is it's a group of people that like freedom and they like farming and they like independence, energy independence, off-grid energy, Bitcoin, growing your own food, raising your own beef. They're all about freedom. It's a good place to go to connect with other like-minded people. You can search by location. You can search by state. You can search by city. I'll put it in the chat, freedomcells.org, not .com. That's where I met John, uh, the guy I stayed with in Texas. Everyone I have ever met through freedomcells.org has been kind and, and like-minded. So um, that's a good place to go and reach out and make your connections. And anyone that's doing that type of work, they need help. It takes a ton of labor to keep a farm going. So a lot of those places will, they'll give you options. Either you can pay them a small amount of rent if you don't want to do the work, you just want a spot to stay with cool people and you want to contribute financially, you can do that. It's still way cheaper than like Harvest Host or a campground. If you don't want to pay rent, which I assume is most of you guys, that was definitely me, um, then you can trade work for a spot to stay. So, and it's not, it's not crazy. I mean, you can work, you know, a few hours a week in exchange for a camping spot. And the other thing you can do is you can also negotiate uh, an hourly wage. So that, that place in Texas, once I got there and John met me and he realized like, oh shit, this guy's good. Like he can do work. He's smart. He's good with electrical. I did all kinds of projects for them and they paid me hourly just cash under the table. So I actually ended up making a pretty good amount of money plus living for free on their farm in Texas. So it was a super, super good um opportunity and then i met a bunch of other folks as well that hired me to go help them on their farm so like there's just so much work out there if you're willing and capable uh back to the chat steve wood i watched your ac video how about putting plastic divider cool area warm area increase efficiency a plastic divider cool area i don't know what you're talking about steve i was are you talking about cool area warm area in the van I mean, you could if you were in a, if you were in a situation where you had a small air conditioner, like if you only had a five thousand BTU air conditioner. Oh, you know what? I got another super chat too. I just saw that come through. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Pepin, our newest channel uh, channel member. Charlie came through a couple of days ago with a channel membership. I appreciate you, Charlie, and he just came through with a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Charlie. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, if you have a like a, a, a smaller air conditioner, like a 5,000 BTU air conditioner, it's not going to do your entire van. So you could block off like your bed area only for night, um, especially if you don't have a lot of solar, right? If you're in a van or something where you can't get in 1,000 watts of solar, then you could definitely consider uh, doing some kind of a room divider. For me, that's not the case. I did not need it. Robert Michael says you meet the nicest folks on a farm. He is absolutely right. Robert also likes Lonnie's pose. I agree with you, Robert. Cousin Lonnie is a character, and uh, he has the best pose. Look at him there, just chilling, throwing the leg up, hanging out. Here's a shot of me and Cousin Lonnie at Schooly Palooza. Uh, he came down from Prescott, and we hung out for a couple weeks and just had a grand old time. And I also mentioned to you guys, I went to Van Aid in Arizona this winter. This is me installing uh, solar for a lady. And that man on the ladder right there, that is Paul, uh, Paul Barger. He used to be the bread trucker, but now he's in a schoolie. So if you know Paul Barger, he's a really cool YouTuber, super nice guy. He just bought 10 acres off grid in northern Arizona. And he is on a road where there are like five different van lifers that all have plots of land so 
I'm considering going to tour his land this summer and see what it looks like and thinking about maybe trying to get land up in that area to kind of be part of his homestead community. So it was super fun to meet up with Paul at Van Aid. He was a really nice guy and I'm happy to add him to my network. And that's what van life is all about, networking. I told you guys I worked for Bob Wells. This is the proof. Uh, this was me, my very first year living in a van. I did filming for the man himself, Bob Wells of Cheap RV Living. That was Bob. This is me behind the camera. <clears throat> and then additionally over here, here's Casey, his assistant, who was also doing some filming, shooting some B-roll. So working with Bob was a very good experience. He's a super nice guy. He is absolutely the same man you see in the video. He is kind, he is caring. He is friendly. Uh, he is just a really good person. So I really appreciated working with Bob. <clears throat> Heading back to the chat. Uh, let's see what we got. Motive says, I'll be 50 in August 29th. Sorry to hear about Lucy. Thank you, Motive. Uh, she re lived a really good life. We had so much fun traveling. Uh, I'm always sorry to see pets go, but it was her time to go. She was, her health declined and... Um, I was just so happy that she had to got to have such a good life. I mean, so many dogs get locked up in a house by themselves eight hours a day while their owners are away at work and they're just, the dogs are lonely all day. But Lucy was with me all day since when I first got her, uh, we were just together and so she had like an awesome life. So it was really good for her. Robert Michael says, if you ran your van's AC, would it cool off the back? Uh, Robert, a little bit, if you're talking about like a cargo van, uh, would it cool it off a little bit, but just not very much? Well, I guess if it's a cargo van, it is designed to cool the whole van space. So yeah, it would cool off a little bit, but you'd have to have the van engine running, um, which is going to be pretty costly. And so at that point, you might as well just get a regular air conditioner and a gas generator. Uh, van engines aren't really designed from my understanding to idle for like hours and hours at a time. Uh, Robert says your info is worth a lot, Brad. We'll hit you up on payday next week. Whoop, whoop. Robert's coming through on payday. I appreciate you, Robert. Uh, guys, let me know. I have a lot of knowledge. I just sometimes don't know what to share. I don't know what you guys want to hear about. So if you have suggestions for stuff you want to know, stuff you think I might know, let me know. Send me an email, nomadbrad503 at gmail.com. Send me an email. Tell me what you want to hear about. Tell me what you want me to do a live about, a discussion about, a video about. Tell me how to help you, and I'll do it. Uh, Satanic Lives Matter says, are you a gamer? I, uh, I am not a gamer. I grew up doing a lot of gaming. I grew up on... Uh, Super Nintendo, I have some of the fondest memories of my childhood are playing GoldenEye on Nintendo 64 with my best friend and his brothers. I would literally go over to their house on Friday night after grade school. We would rent GoldenEye from Hollywood Video for N64. This is back when games were like $65 a piece. And so our parents wouldn't just buy us everything. So we had to rent them. And we would literally get the three-day rental. And we would play GoldenEye from 6 o'clock on Friday until 5 o'clock on Sunday when my mom picked me up. And it was like the best time. It was one of the best times of my life. Absolutely fun. So uh, I loved gaming. I graduated on to Counter-Strike when I was in high school. After high school, I did original Halo uh, all the way up to the you know current Halos. But I don't game anymore. I just, the older I get, the less rewarding I find it. I feel like I, I prefer to do things that manifest in the physical space. So I like building things with my hands, converting vans, installing electrical. Uh, for me personally, gaming just isn't rewarding or satisfying like it used to be. So for those reasons, I don't game, but to each their own. And to those of you that enjoy gaming, I say game on, my friends. Robert Michael says, insulation is very important to me. I'm in the north, so don't know if hiring somebody to spray... Uh, yeah, Robert, I think spray foam insulation is the best choice if you can afford it. At the time, I was on a super budget, and I just didn't want to do spray foam. Uh, I have no good excuse other than I was on a tight budget. But if I could go back and I could afford it, I would have done spray foam. I think it's far superior. 
uh, got reactions says, do you think starting a solar business like yours is a good idea? Uh, got reactions. <clears throat> if you have experience, um, electrical is a pretty steep learning curve from what people tell me. I've done electrical like almost my whole life. When I first got a car at 16, I started installing car stereos, amplifiers, speakers, and basically from 16 up, I've been working on vehicle electrical systems, LED lighting, um, <clears throat> stereos. And then when I got into my career in HVAC, I learned all the 110 volt stuff. So I've been in electrical so long, it's just easy for me. But I would say make sure you have strong fundamentals of electrical because when you're working on somebody else's project, especially their home, it can be very dangerous. Uh, if you do something incorrect, you know, you can cause a fire, you can do all kinds of stuff. So make sure you're very confident in your skill set and then you can definitely uh, do solar. The one thing I would recommend is I've struggled a lot getting clients because I travel so much. When I started my business in Austin, Texas, the amount of work I had down there was unbelievable. I was making very good money. My phone was ringing off the hook. I, I removed my Google listing uh, from, in, from Texas like two months ago, and I'm still getting people calling me asking for solar and air conditioning in Texas. For some reason, there's a ton of people in Texas with van conversions. So what I would suggest for you is when you get started, Start out your business in a central location so that you can get money going and you can establish yourself. You can build a website. You can get Google reviews. You can get experience. You can get photographs. You want to get your business like dialed in and, and humming along. And then I wouldn't recommend traveling until you have either a big savings or you have like a steady stream of clients down the road like if you're in point a you know you're going to drive to point b but there's work there because i made the assumption that because work was so easy in texas i made the assumption i could come to arizona or go to san diego and get work and it's been actually very difficult so if i didn't have this youtube income uh if i didn't have income from youtube and if i didn't have an audience on YouTube that reached out to me for work, I would be in a financial pickle. So those are things to consider. It's difficult uh, to get in if you don't understand electrical, and it's difficult to grow your business in the beginning. <clears throat> uh, hopping back to the chat. Let's see what's going on. Robert Michael, I do not want to pay rent. Robert Michael, I agree with you. I don't want to pay rent either. Uh, let's see. Pete Pan, Red Bar wrote an article about you, man. He's been doing an investigation on the texts that were sent. Not looking good. The texts that were sent. Red Bar, who the heck is this? I don't know anything about this. Oh, look at this. Oh, no, that's somebody. That's a different Nomad Brad. Uh... Red bar. What is red bar? I don't know what this is. Anyway, I don't know. I'll try to look it up later. I don't know what red bar is. Um, okay. Uh, Pete Pan, tell me what red bar is. I don't know. Uh, okay. Let's move on down the chat. See how we're doing. Okay, let's look down at what Charlie says. I appreciate the info and look forward to my build. Uh, Charlie Pepin, what are you building, man? You doing a box truck or you doing a van or a shuttle bus? What's on what's on the plate? Uh, Robert would be interested in homesteading. Yeah, me too. Adventures with Super Dave. You're almost to twenty thousand subscribers. Thanks, Super Dave. I am very close. I'm at like nine. Let's see where, where the channel is at right now. 19,907 subscribers, almost up to the 20K. Uh, Leroy Essel says, has anyone purchased hydrogen fuel cell electric generator? Wow, that sounds like some high-tech stuff. I have no idea what that is. Um, <clears throat> big rolling home, the van costs, say 20K and the generator 500. 
Pete Pan, I'd get ahead of this red bar situation. His address, this before he does. I don't, Pete Pan, I don't know what red bar is. You got to tell me. Um, got reactions. Ha ha, I rented the console and game just to play GoldenEye. Yes, exactly, man. I'm in the same boat. Uh, I, I would rent. That was back in the good old days. Uh, Leroy, what is safe spray foam for inside and below the cargo space to keep warm? Yep, spray foam's a good choice. I definitely recommend it. Got reactions. I did car stereo, car alarms. Anything beyond that, AC scares me, but batteries I'm comfortable with. Yeah, got reactions. I would recommend really, really research it um, because, it, you know, with... Uh, you know, batteries, especially when you get into higher voltage systems, there's a lot of danger there. So just make sure you're super comfortable before you do anything. Darren Rivey says electrical work without being licensed. Darren, there's no licensing for uh, vehicle electrical work, vehicle solar work. There's some licensing you can do, like there's a car stereo license you can get. Um, you can be RV certified. You can get your RVA certification. Um, but there's not really an official license uh, for doing like solar systems on vehicles. Uh, got reactions. I could do web Google for work. Awesome, dude. So you got, I mean, if you do web and Google, buddy, you're all set for a remote income and a very nice remote income. So you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, Leroy Essel, I want to end up wasting 13 a month on rent. Should I keep it simple and buy a van or truck like Nomad Brad? Yeah, rent is crazy, man. When you look at the cost of, of, of rent versus the cost of owning some, um, when you look at the cost of just buying a van or something, um, then it's pretty easy to uh, see that it's just it's way more affordable uh, to hop into a van. Steve Wood looking at buying U-Haul truck. What should I look out for? Tran engine, transmission, suspension systems. Any tips on buying used U-Haul trucks? Would you buy a used U-Haul truck? Yeah, just have it uh, inspected. Anytime you buy a vehicle, especially to live in, definitely take it to a mechanic before you have it inspected. Have them look it out. Have them look it over. And, uh, you know, make sure it's in, it's in sound condition. And then also it's good to have a security fund, uh, you know, just to make sure that if something does go wrong, if you do break down, um, then, you know, you have some money to kind of fall back on. So you're not stranded somewhere. Uh, Steve Wood looking at buying a U-Haul truck. What should I look out for? Engine, transmission, suspension. Uh, Steve Wood, I have a video maybe a year ago, but it says uh, something about, it's a video about, here, I'll drop it in the chat. It's a video about what to look for when you're buying a van. And I did a walkthrough of this U-Haul that I'm living in right now before I purchased it. And so I did a walkthrough. I kind of explained everything that I look for. And so this is a good first step. I recommend do a do a, th a thorough once over on the vehicle just in person and then if the vehicle looks good then i would recommend having a mechanic look it over because there's still things that a mechanic will know that you won't know but i would do a diligent first inspection on my own before because um, you don't want to waste money taking a van to a mechanic to have inspected if there's like obvious things that are wrong with it um, that you that you could have caught on your own. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Got reactions. Rent has gone crazy. Uh, let's see. Charlie Pepin was going to be a 8x16 cargo trailer but decided to go box truck. Yeah, I personally don't like the idea of having like basically two vehicles your your tow or your primary vehicle with a trailer it's just a lot larger it's harder to park it you can't really do city camping very well you're going to be super limited on um parking spaces i don't i don't think it's i don't think it's a good idea i would even recommend a larger box truck 
or a short bus before you go to like van and trailer. They're just so big. So I would definitely, you know, suggest against that. Uh, I know very few nomads that full time pulling trailers behind them. Uh, introverted overlander at the grocery store just chiming in yes overlander we dropped some fire tonight definitely go back and catch the replay i think it was pretty good um drew says a lot of nomads buy land as a home base and then they could complimentarily host nomads or rent cheap parking camping spots like tiny homes yep that's the plan uh, all right, guys, that's it for me. It is 7, 11 p.m. We're going to wrap it up. Nomad Brad is hungry. It's time to go eat the roast. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to hop off right here. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the channel. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. I appreciate you guys. And I want you to, uh, you know, share the channel if you know anybody that might be interested. I always appreciate thumbs up and comments on the videos. It helps me grow the channel. So I will see you guys next week. We'll do it again Wednesday, uh, same time, 6 p.m. Pacific. And if you guys have any feedback on what you would like to discuss or topics that interest you, send me a uh, 